Well, gang, I am working on my pull list for November 2020. All the books that I am pre-ordering from my local comic book store. I've already done videos for Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, all of the minor publishers. And now we are wrapping up with DC Comics. But uh, here's the thing. Of the 52 new comics that DC will publish in November 2020, I'm only getting six of them. So basically what this is, is me going through the catalog and ragging on about 90% of DC's product, telling you why it sucks and why I will not buy it. So if that sounds like fun to you, well, stick around. I think you're about to have a lot of fun. Hey there, Bobby. Hey, welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is The Pull List. Each month I go through and review what books I will be buying in two months at my local comic book store. Uh, if you know anything about comics, you know that that's kind of how the industry works these days. Uh, folks pre-order their books at their local comic book store a couple of months in advance. That helps the stores to know which books to order, how much of each book to order, so they don't get stuck with unsold issues. And most stores offer a discount for that service. But uh, that is uh, that is neither here nor there. We are going to go through this catalog, the DC Connect catalog, digital only. And we'll go through, and like I said in the teaser, uh, this is pretty much going to be me just ragging on <laughs> everything DC has to publish and telling you why it sucks and why I will not buy it. <laughs> so uh, again, I hope I hope that'll be a good time for you. It, it's it's kind of a bad time, a rough time for me because I love DC Comics. I've been collecting comic books for a long time, long, long time, probably longer than you've been alive. I've been a regular comic book collector since the mid 1970s, and I've always been a DC guy. DC's always been my mainstay, and since Oh, the 90s. Anyway, I've had a pull list at a local comic book store, and you know, usually it's half DC, but it's been getting less and less and less DC lately. And the last year or so, I haven't even hit my full monthly spouse-approved budget. <laughs> my, my lending officer, the first national spouse, dictates how much I can spend on comic books each month. And, and for the last year or so, I haven't even been hitting that. So I've been I've been diving into the dollar boxes uh, just to just to make budget. <laughs> so it, it's kind of a hard time. COVID aside, it's a hard time to be a new comic book fan. So anyway, let's go through this, and uh, I'll tell you what I'm buying, what I'm not buying, and why I'm not buying uh, certain things. And the, the first thing here, the other history of the DC Universe number one. <laughs> And, uh, God, you know, I hate to start here because this is going to turn a lot of people off and it's probably going to get me in trouble. It's going to get people referring to me as a, a, a alt-right troll or white nationalist, what, whatever invectives they are throwing out this week. Um, well, let's be, you know, up front. The reason I'm not buying this book is kind of right here. And I, I don't know if you can see the mouse or not. Where is it? Uh, this unique new series presents its story as prose by Ridley, and this is John Ridley, director of 12 Years a Slave and other great movies, uh, married with beautifully realized illustrations by uh, however he wants to pronounce his name is fine with me. <laughs> I don't want to try it because I don't I, I don't want to mangle it and and make him feel bad. But so basically it's not comics. It's not a comic book, so that's why I'm not buying it. It is seven bucks for 48 pages. That's a little expensive even if it was a comic book. Uh but uh you know where does it say here what this is? This compelling new miniseries that reframes iconic moments of DC history and charts a previously unexplored socio-political thread as seen through the prism of DC superheroes who come from traditionally disenfranchised groups. Well, you know, the black experience is fine, um, you know, but I, I'm not interested in any kind of not just retroactive continuity, but retroactive history. And when it comes to, you know, this type of thing, I guess I really favor the opinion um, circulated by Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman has said that, you know, the best way to address racism is to stop 
talking about racism. <laughs> and you know, when Black Lightning first came out, I was there. I bought those issues in the 70s off the stands, new, and and I loved Black Lightning. I loved Tyrock, um, Vixen, you know, a little later on in the 80s, you know, and Power Man, Black Panther, you know. I loved all of those heroes. You know, my first Mego action figure, the one I expressly asked for, was the Falcon. Uh, so... <laughs> You know? um, but back then, you know, somebody just was black, but it wasn't, it wasn't an issue. Tyrock aside, but even Tyrock, you know, after his first little angry black man tirade in his first appearance, the first issue I actually bought myself off the stand was the issue that he joined, Superboy number 218, where Brainiac 5 was like, hey, yeah, you're the first black member of the Legion, but, you know, we've got, we've got green members and blue members and orange members and yellow members so um get over it <laughs> and tyrock was basically okay i will <laughs> and that was the end of that <laughs> you know and and so i don't know this whole black lives matter movement um which yeah obviously uh, they do obviously yes some people are downtrodden um but you know what I can still remember in 1989 when I went to college and I was denied financial aid, even though, you know, I lived on my own, I had no income other than what I made waiting tables, and I was told that with my income, there was nothing they could do for me. The financial aid officer at the college, the University of Southern Maine, actually said to me, it's too bad because with your level of income, there's a lot I could do for you if you were black. So you can say, well, Duke, you still don't know what it's like, you know, systematic racism. You don't know what that's like. But but I do know what it's like to be disenfranchised just because of the color of my skin, to be told that I'm worthless, that I don't count simply because of my physical appearance, you know? <laughs> and when it comes to black people, when I was, you know, a kid in the 70s and I had my cigar box guitar out and I'm rocking out with the junkyard band, Yes, I knew they looked different than me, but I didn't think of them as something, you know, fundamentally different from me. I mean, granted, yes, Rudy was a dirty little one percenter, <laughs> but he was the only one who could report a real instrument, so we let him hang. So this whole thing, this whole recent thing, it just, it just drives me crazy because some of it seems so, what can I say, unnecessary, unneeded? I, I, I don't even know where to begin. But uh, again, you know, uh, this seems like it's going to be a lot of revisionism, a lot of how put upon Black Lightning was because he was black. Well, you know, he was an Olympic athlete, Jefferson Pierce, and a public school teacher, you know, so uh, don't, don't cry to me about your victimhood. You know, John Ridley, uh, you make more in a month than I will make in my entire lifetime. I'm not real interested in hearing about your victimhood. <laughs> so, yeah, all of this social engineering, you know, and, and social justice warrior books, and I hate to use those buzzwords because I know that will trigger people, you know, if I say woke and soy boy and things like that. But good Lord, you know, there's a reason why DC Comics in the 60s and 70s hardly ever addressed the Vietnam War because who's your audience? I mean, really? you know and so who's your audience here for this book who are you trying to reach you know the 10 and 12 year olds who should be the primary audience for comic books granted i'm a 50 year old fanboy who forgot to outgrow them but what kind of social engineering are you trying to accomplish with this book what kind of revisionist history are you trying to accomplish i mean yes black lightning um he he was from the inner city. The whole thing was about going back to the inner city. The original Black Lightning story by Tony Isabella was effectively Welcome Back Cotter meets Breaking Bad, which is really how the TV show should have been handled, frankly, if you want my opinion. I, I'm not really a big fan of the TV show, just because I don't think it's you know that well done. So, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've probably said too much, you know, and, and you're all going to say that, you know, somebody is going to get in the comments about my white privilege. Well, you know what? Screw you. Uh, again, I think I've more than addressed that uh, I've got, uh, you know, my the color of my skin is, has got me nothing special. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know. I just, 
I don't feel there's a need for this book. I don't think it accomplishes anything. And like Morgan Freeman said, you know, the best way to address racism is to just stop talking about racism. You know, you keep stop saying white people are racist all the time and just just normalize the interaction. You know, when I was growing up, you know, and granted, you know, in Maine it was but still probably 97% white people and then it was probably 99% plus in the 70s. Yeah. But, you know, so what did I know of black people other than my cousin Keith and the characters that I knew in comic books? Well, I knew I knew Fat Albert. I knew Morgan Freeman as Easy Reader. I knew Metalock Lemon. <laughs> so what did I know of black people? I knew that they were ethical. They were smart. They were funny. You know? They were everything I aspired to be. You know, in the 80s, I did not want to be anybody on this planet more than I wanted to be. Eddie Murphy, because Eddie were cool. <laughs> Eddie were cool. <laughs> so, um, I, I just, I have trouble believing anyone of my generation, anyway, anyone in Gen X, is really as racist as, as people claim today when they say all white people are racist and they can't help it. You know, well, you know, all people are racist to a certain degree. That's just inbred. I mean, that's just part of your genetic heritage. Back when we were you know, lizard brain, skip and go naked in the jungle, you know, you, the one, the one real, uh, survival skill that, that human beings had was the ability to recognize patterns. And if you couldn't tell at a glance that somebody was not of your tribe, there was a good chance you were going to end up dead. So even today, people can't help it back in their lizard brains. You know, if you're in a normally white neighborhood and a black guy walks down the street, you're going to eyeball him just out of curiosity, you know, <laughs> just just out of recognition that here's something different. It's no different than when my wife rolls down the street in her wheelchair. Everybody looks. Everybody gawks. You know, they, 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 they can't help but recognize here is something different. You know, the, the example that people use, the little old lady walking down the alleyway and, you know, three young black guys pass her and she clutches her purse a little tighter. That's not, that's not racism. That's just that's just survival skills. You, you are on heightened alert. Your spidey senses are going off until you are sure that there is no danger. And it, you know, it probably be that, you know, it's that way if it's, you know, three white kids or Asian kids or whoever. So I don't know. This book kind of pisses me off because I just don't feel there's any need for it. Uh, I, I don't feel that the, there is that much real racism apart from what is promoted on progressive liberal college campuses. Uh, I just don't feel that. I mean, everyone talks about the Klan and, you know, Trump has to, you know, denounce the Klan like he hasn't a dozen times or more. But, uh, you know, nobody takes the Klan seriously. Nobody ever has, not in my lifetime. They're completely ridiculous. And as far as actual white nationalists, I'm not convinced there are enough real white nationalists outside of the boogeymen that exist in the uh, media mindset. There aren't enough real white nationalists to fill the gym of a high school basketball game. So, you know, John Ridley, <laughs> uh, I guess I would say to you what Brainiac 5 said to Tyrock, get the fuck over it. <laughs> You know? And the only response I expect from you is, okay, I will. <laughs> so there, uh, that's my rant, and um, I'm sure uh, that nobody is watching <laughs> at this point. But that's okay, I kind of do these videos just for me. I don't have many subscribers or many viewers anyway, it's still a new channel. I don't expect to ever get to the uh, 1,000 minimum needed for monetization, so... Uh, this is just me talking to myself. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Punchline special number one. I did not uh, order this book. Uh, nothing particularly against it. I've been reading the Batman books. I came on in number 92, which was her first appearance, and I'm just kind of, eh, not impressed. Uh, not impressed that I really feel the need to spend five bucks on a 48-page book because I just don't. <laughs> So, so there's that. Now, 
I will say, you know, I mentioned that I have uh, been picking up Batman since around issue 92, and that's largely because of coming out of COVID, so few books were getting delivered. Diamond was having problems. UCS, the new distributor for DC Comics, couldn't seem to get anything right. Still is having problems fulfilling orders. And you've heard Perch, maybe, if you watch the videos on the Comics by Perch channel, he's been talking about how the, the top-selling books have been taking off lately and the mid-tier is just kind of wallowing or collapsing. Well, that's, I think, partly because Diamond and UCS don't seem to be able to deliver those mid-tier books. The top-tier books are what's out there. And as a fan, if you can't buy what you want, you'll buy what's there. And that's exactly why I picked up Batman. Everyone was talking about it. It was basically the only book that was on the stands because I was getting so few things in for my pull list that I picked it up. And even though I haven't really loved it, it is uh, here with issue 102 that I go just go ahead and add it to my pull list. You know, it's a good-looking book. I think James Tinian's writing is very decompressed. It is very archetypical of modern comic book storytelling, where it seems to be written more for a um, written as a television script than a comic book. Uh, so you don't really get much of anything in any one issue. But I do think this character here, this new villain, is uh, what is it? The Ghost Maker. That's a pretty cool design. It doesn't seem very practical for hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> I think he'd get his legs tied up and his ass kicked pretty quickly uh, in the real world. But it's a cool costume. And Tinian, um, despite the glacial plotting, uh, he has been introducing a new rogues, Fast and Furious. And it is kind of fun to be in on the ground floor, even though, going back to Punchline... I wasn't really impressed that I want to buy the special with her origin. So when she's basically Harley Quinn light, it seems like. Uh, she's basically um, teen dream Harley Quinn. So uh, that's what I've got to say about that. Moving on. Okay, we can skip all of the dark metal tie-ins. I have event fatigue. I am so over events. And the original dark metal event was to me a mess i tried not getting any of the crossovers and just reading the main series and i couldn't make heads and tails out of what was going on it's like who is this hawk god thing where is this coming from why is plastic man a, a big giant egg what's going on so i'm over events you, you can't afford to get every issue in an event and if you try and get just a few you've got no idea what's going on and so all of this dark multiverse stuff that spins out of heavy metal, nope, sorry. Uh, what do we got here? Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Flashpoint number one, nope, sorry. And and also this is because six bucks for 48 pages, so nope. Um, DC Dead Planet, that's something different, I think, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of full on zombies. I'm kind of over zombies. That book is about five years too late for me. <laughs> So, uh, so the DC stuff is nothing. It's a clever name, Deceased, get it? Uh, but uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal number five, haven't been buying that. I've explained why. $4.99 for 32 pages, so that's just a cash grab. You can go fuck yourselves sideways, DC. Dark Knight's Death Metal multiverse, who laughs? Nope. Although I will say that that's a cool character design. Um, but not for me, Dark Knight's Death Metal, Infinite Hours, Extreme. And now we're getting to the point where these are tie-ins and crossovers that seem absolutely, completely useless. So there's that. Justice League, I wasn't buying the regular book anyway, so I'm certainly not going to buy it as a tie-in to an event that is spinning off from an event that I did not understand. <laughs> and yeah, new events that I'm not buying, so that's a no. All right, Sweet Tooth the Return, and this would have been a Vertigo book back in the day. Now it's a black label book. It appears to be regular size, so it's not in that weird, unwieldy black label size, I don't think. It's only four bucks. I say only four bucks. I can remember back when I I swore when Dark Horse and other, you know, quote unquote independent companies went to two ninety five. I was like, I will never, ever, ever pay. Two ninety five dollars for a regular DC or Marvel comic book. And here I am now paying $3.99. <laughs> My budget hasn't changed much since then. I still spend about $25, $30 bucks a week on new comics. Or, you know, if there's not enough I want, diving into the dollar box and getting old comics. But uh, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting fewer books for the same amount of money. But um, 
I, I lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> That's what happens when you're an old man and you're just bitching and ranting. Basically, this whole video is me saying, telling DC Comics to get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, why am I not getting this book? Well, Jeff Lemire, Lemire, I'm not sure how he says it, um, is, uh, he, he runs hot and cold with me. Uh, I've said in other videos, uh, the thing I liked best was his Green Arrow run, and that was probably in retrospect, largely because of the artwork of Andrea Sorrento. Uh, and Jeff really turned me off with his, uh, Legion of Superheroes story, which is a nonsensical disaster. Uh, <laughs> it was like one, one, just like slightly one peg above the current Brian Michael Bendis version, which is the worst Legion ever. Um, so, uh, why am I not getting this? Just cause I don't feel like it. <laughs> How's that for an answer? But looking at this and reading this solicitation, this basically strikes me as a typical Vertigo book. And I didn't love Vertigo as much as a lot of people did. There were a lot of Vertigo things where I was like, why is this a comic book? You know, why is this talking heads, weird ass bullshit actually a comic book? You know, there's nothing in it that really dictates a need to be told in a graphic format. Why does it demand to be told as a comic book story and not a YA novel? But you are certainly welcome in the comments to tell me why you think this series is going to be great. Why I should be buying it and why I'm not just writing it off as, yeah, I don't know. So now here's the other thing though. And the other reason that I'm not going to buy it. For so look at this is what? This is four pages, five pages. This looks like it's maybe a double page spread. So this is six pages. What is actually accomplished here? Sweet Tooth, if that's his name, goes for a walk. That's six pages of Sweet Tooth going for a walk. So this is incredibly decompressed. Now, who knows what the actual dialogue is going to be here. There won't be any narrative captions. We know that because that's passe. There won't be any thought balloons. So that's also considered uh, old-fashioned and quaint. There probably won't be 40 words on a page here. And, and not a lot is actually accomplished on any one page. Here's a page, just three panels. He walks across the lawn. Here's a page, just three panels. He looks at somebody and somebody's looking back or he's remembering somebody somebody's evil look and it makes him walk a little faster. Maybe, I don't know. Here's a two-page spread of nothing happens other than he walks across the lawn and he's been walking across the damn lawn for three pages now. Nothing happens other than he walks across the lawn and he encounters these robots. And I mean, this is moving at just an absolutely glacial pace where Lemire is, he, he is scripting out every single beat of every single scene as if he was writing a TV script, right? He has camera shot after camera shot. And sometimes like when you have a repeat panel like this, this is the kind of decompression that sometimes works. You know, you see his, he's made a fist and he relaxes and that kind of decompression works. But when it is decompressed to the point that nothing actually happens because you are taking so much space, these six pages, if this was in fact a TV script and was filmed, these six pages would take, what, less than a minute of screen time? And and it takes literally probably not more than a minute to read this. So this entire book, you know, for four bucks, is probably going to read in about seven or eight minutes. So that's really the reason I'm not buying it. <laughs> because it's just, you know, decompressed foolishness. All right, Strange Adventures Director's Cut. That's a cash grab. Uh <laughs> So, you know, I didn't think much of the regular cut, so, you know, I don't need the director's cut. Um, American Vampire, 1976, number two. I wasn't buying number one. And for all the same things I just said about up here, Sweet Tooth, you know, totally decompressed. Nothing actually happens in any one issue. Not worth the money. Not convinced that it's done in a style that even needs to be told in comic books. Although, you know, vampires fighting, that seems a little more dynamic, but even so. Uh, Harley Quinn, White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. Uh, Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. Number two. I didn't get number one. 
Um, I do like Sean Gordon Murphy. I don't love him as much as a lot of people do, but he's a fellow Mainer. I can just about throw a brick and hit his house from mine. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I try and support uh, Sean as often as I can, but this isn't actually written by him, nor is it drawn by him. Uh, and so I don't feel the need. Again, also because it's five bucks, a regular, you know, it's not even three ninety nine for thirty two pages. Now it's friggin' four ninety nine. Uh, Rorschach. Uh, well, you know, I ran hot and cold in number one. I wasn't gonna get it because it felt like a rip. And then I was like, oh, I'll give Tom King a chance. And then Tom King was a dick online. Um, and I'm like, I'm definitely not buying anything by Tom King ever. But then he apologized. Um, to the people that he wronged, and I was like, okay, well, he's an adult anyway. Um, but then I decided, you know what, I just don't trust Tom King to handle a Steve Ditko character. And I know, it, I mean, Rorschach is not a Steve Ditko character, but it's based on the question a Steve Ditko character. And the whole thing about Rorschach, the whole central core of the psyche of Rorschach is the same as the Steve Ditko character that that focus on objectivism, and I just don't trust I don't trust uh, Tom King to get objectivism right. Uh, and apparently, he's not even trying. I've read something since issue one was solicited that he's not basing this Rorschach on uh, on an obsession with Ayn Rand or objectivism. He's chosen some other like uber liberal progressive person um so the same kind of thing but more somebody that is in line with his thinking i think um which is kind of not in line with mine <laughs> so but again uh, five bucks for 32 pages no all right i'm i i swore i would never pay more than 295 i went up to 299 i went up to 399 now I'm drawing the line. I'm just not paying five bucks for a regular 32-page comic book. It's not going to happen. Uh, Wonder Woman 766. I haven't heard a lot of good things. I was buying Wonder Woman. Um, I, I stuck with it a lot longer than I meant to, and I finally dropped it kind of in the middle of the G. Willow Wilson run. And I haven't seen enough positive chatter online that I'm willing to jump back on the book, especially when it's twice a month. So in order to add it, I've got to cut two things from my pull list, uh, and so I'm just not confident. House of L, book one, the Shadow Threat trade paperback. This appears to be a new book right out of left field. I have no idea what this is, thing is all about, but it looks like it's part of DC's new effort to attract middle school readers. It's a kind of a YA novel kind of thing, I'm guessing. Um, it is a smaller size, six by nine, but I don't have room to fit a 17-page book into my budget i'd have to cut out what four or five regular titles i'm buying and there's nothing here in these preview pages that tells me again this is pretty decompressed every scene beat by beat by beat by beat you know you've got a whole page that could have been done as easily in one or two panels same here whole page could have been done in one or two panels here's a double page spread uh, you know that's gonna read in about 30 seconds you know um, it just doesn't seem to be worth the money. Now this one, we found a monster. This looks like fun. This is obviously aimed at middle school readers. It's a YA thing. It's 10 bucks, which is a little better price point. 144 pages. This one was 208. But, um, this one, this one looks more like the thing I'm, it's not for me, but I'm glad it exists for the people that it's for. Uh, so I'm not going to rag on that one too much. Endless Winter is coming, and we'll talk about that next month. Action Comics. Uh, I have hated Brian Michael Bendis' run on Superman. I tried it at first. I finally, I finally dropped it when I realized that this whole thing, this whole bad dad version of Jor-El was not a hoax, not a dream, not an imaginary story. Um, and I've had my fill of bad dads had my own <laughs> so you know, don't i don't uh, i don't need that in my uh, escapist fiction uh and john romita jr i've never been a, a fan of john romita jr way back in the late 80s he is what chased me off the x-men books back around uh, x-men 190 200 somewhere in that area is where i dropped x-men so Nothing there for me, Superman 27. And we know by now that next month, uh, the December books will be Brian Michael Bendis' last 
Gray. We'll uh, wait and see what they replace him with. It looks like it's going to be Mark Wade. Um, so we will see. Aquaman 65. I was on that series at the beginning. I kind of lost interest in it. I think I'd already dropped it by the time Kelly Sue DeConnick came along. Nothing that she does really has ever interested me. Uh, you know, Aquaman... Aquaman, I think, needs to look more like the film Aquaman. They ought to just bite the bullet and do that. And I've always said Aquaman is basically Lord of the Rings under the sea. Aquaman is underwater Conan. Um, some mix of that is what Aquaman should be. Batman Beyond, the TV show, came along after I had, um, after I was uh, fully adulting and <laughs> working for a living and not watching as many cartoons. Uh, so I never really watched the Batman Beyond TV show, so I don't have the nostalgia required to get into the comic book. Batman's Grave, well, you know what? There's just too goddamn much Batman. I don't need 20 Batman books a month. So, uh, Batman Superman, that started out as a dark metal tie-in, so that's why I didn't get on at the beginning. And these days, if you're not on in the beginning, there's really no point in jumping on. Batman The Adventures continue. Now, here is a show that I watched. Here is a uh, the original series I loved. Uh, and, you know, with uh, Paul Dini, that is something that's going to be for me. So that is on my pull list. So <laughs> I've been ranting for how long has this video been going now? A half hour, maybe? <laughs> and we finally got to the first book that I'm like, yes, I am buying that book. Um, and uh, I, I'm a little disappointed that it's a, a limited series, and I don't think I caught when it first started that it was going to be a limited series. So here's a dollar uh, reprint, or two dollar reprint, um, which I don't need because I have the original. Uh, Catwoman 27, I bought that book when it first came out. I did enjoy Joelle Jones' art, although it was a little decompressed. And basically, because not a lot was happening in any one issue, I ended up dropping it. Just wasn't worth four bucks a pop. And so I haven't seen anything that, you know, entices me to come back. Detective Comics 1030. Peter Tomasi is probably better than the average comic book writer these days. But still, I tried his detective for a while and dropped it because not enough happened in any one issue for four bucks. Too decompressed. 1031. Been dreaming. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's Discount Sandman. Not interested. The Flash. So we've got a new writer here on The Flash, but um, I don't know. I dropped it during the Joshua Williamson run, and everybody praises it, but I was, you know, the same thing, too decompressed. And I came back because people were praising it, and I tried it at his year one story, and I'm like, so The Flash's boots are firemen's boots? Uh <laughs> How stupid is this? Do you know a fireman? Uh, <laughs> you know, one, I was a volunteer fireman for a while in my town. And I want to tell you right now, firefighter boots are not something you run in. <laughs> you are going to fall over your feet in a hurry. And the idea that he wore fireman's boots because uh, they're heat resistant. No, 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 no. The thing about firefighter boots is they're water resistant. <laughs> <laughs> firefighters aren't going to get close enough to the fire to melt their boots <laughs> the main thing they want is to be water resistant so you know yeah the suit you know the the turnout gear the ppe is uh flame retardant and you know the soles of the boots may be a little bit as well but the main thing with the boots is water resistance so <laughs> i was like well, that's just dumb and so i dropped the book again immediately uh, Green Lantern, I really did want to like Grant Morrison's Green Lantern Season 1. And, and here again, this is, you know, when you're calling things Season 1 and Season 2, you are too deep into the TV scripting mentality. Uh, you know, it's a comic book. It's its own art form with its own rules and needs. <laughs> Problem is that a Grant Morrison book has no rules. <laughs> None whatsoever. And I, I wanted to like it because, again, the first series, he started out being kind of what I've always said Green Lantern should be. You know, give him a partner, and it's basically Adam-12 in space. You know, the Green Lantern Corps is basically Hill Street Blues in space. Um, and that's where Morrison was originally going. But towards the end of that first series, it was just utterly incomprehensible. So... 
I will not put this on my pull list. I'll take a look at it on the stands. If it's got any Legion of Superheroes related characters, like even even ones like Hulk, Carr, you know, that are like totally anal retentive <laughs> connections, um, I might get it just because I have to have everything Legion related. Now, here's a book that is on my pull list, and I have loved this book, um, Hawkman by Robert Venditti. The best book DC has been publishing, and rather than canceling it, it really ought to be putting a giant marketing push behind it, I think. Um, but, no, they've decided to cancel it, and this is the last issue. I'm kind of hoping that Vendetti ends up on Superman, not Mark Wade, but I, I'm kind of used to, with DC Comics, not getting what I want. <laughs> So, uh, I'm very disappointed this series is being canceled. I did love it. I thought it was great. Some of the tie-in issues to events, it went off the rails, but overall it was great. Hellblazer, I've never been a fan of Hellblazer, just because I, I was never into that 90s era grim and gritty stuff. So, Hellblazer isn't really for me. This is a book that I was not on my pull list, but I tried the first issue, um much like Batman, because there wasn't enough for my pull list coming in. So I had room one week in my budget where I only got a couple of books, and I was like, it was on the stands, the first issue, and I'm like, okay, I'll try it. The artwork looks great. Um, but it is now dropped down to 32 pages. It, it was larger than that, I think. And the, the, the most recent issue I got, it was in my pull list, because I had eventually put it on my pull list, because it's only a bi-monthly book, and I had time to put it on the pull list. And I actually, I had, I had to feel it. I thought it was missing pages. It felt thin, it, it, you know, oddly, strangely. So that format doesn't work for a 32-page book, that large black label format. And six bucks for 32 pages. Basically, DC, you can go fuck yourself. So <laughs> I've actually dropped that. And I very, very rarely do I drop a mini series mid-run. But um, I have dropped that book. Justice League Dark, well, you know, I've got too much Justice League in my life, uh, even though I'm not getting any Justice League books. You know, I could go for a Zatanna series or a Dr. Fate series or a Detective Chimp series, but for some reason I've got no interest in Justice League Dark, and probably because just using the Justice League name, it feels like like I'm being manipulated. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the, the natural contrarian in me is like, yeah, no. Last God, I don't know anything about that or what it is. I just know that, you know, five bucks for 32 pages, not going to happen. Legion of Superheroes, the less said the better. I am a huge, huge Legion fan, and I hate, hate, hate everything Brian Michael Bendis has done with the Legion. Not just the needless changes to some of the characters, but uh, the fact that nothing happens, you know, um... And, and what does happen is so nonsensical. It's just a really, really bad book. Uh, I'm buying it because it's Legion, but it's a really, really bad book. I do not recommend it to you at all. Looney Tunes 257. Well, this wasn't on my uh, list initially, but I had some room. I didn't quite, I didn't hit budget. I didn't even quite hit half a budget. You know, I left some room for doing some dollar box diving each week. And, but I, I just, as an impulse, I decided at the last minute to add this book in just because of the whole Bugs Bunny and the Revolutionary War era. <laughs> I'm like, well, that could be fun or it could be a disaster. Either way, I've probably got a good review video. So <laughs> that's why I did that. Mad, it's all reprints. Mad doesn't matter anymore. Metal Men. Metal Men would make a great, you know, book with Scholastic or target it at that audience. You know, if DC got into making educational comics, I've often said the Metal Men would be perfect. I mean, they, they can teach science and engineering and math. They're basically a perfect STEM book. But, <laughs> as done by Dan DiDio, it's like, eh, pass, hard pass. Nightwing, Nightwing's always been a pass for me. You know, I've just never felt like, why? What's the purpose, you know? And I know some of you will, will not feel the same, and you'll take me to task in the comments. Um, that's okay. Uh, I think what would interest me in Nightwing is if he took on a partner. If he decided that, you know, Batman failed, you know, every... He failed me. He failed every, you know, young protege he's taken on. I'm going to do it right. You know, kind of like, you know, the fatherhood thing. 
my father was a terrible father, but I'm going to try and be a good father. Um, and so if he took on a partner and I probably, you know, just because of the way things are today, I'd make it a young female just because that, that would bring in more, you know, or it, it would bring in more media attention, if not more actual readers. Uh, and, and I'd call it Nightwing and Flame Bird. And so you know, may be a Nightwing and Flame Bird book where he's dedicating himself to training the next generation now. Uh, I might could maybe try that, but as for right now, there just doesn't seem to be any point or purpose to Nightwing. Red Hood I hate just because I hate the whole idea of Jason Todd. I liked Jason Todd when he was first introduced, and then when DC let Max Allen Collins change him into a um, street punk, and that might actually be the same vehicle that he boosted the tires off. <laughs> it looks like the, not dissimilar from the way the Batmobile looked then. Um, uh, I, I just have always hated Jason Todd. I actually, in that infamous phone poll, I, I'm one of the ones who voted to kill him. And I wish he'd stayed dead. I just hate that whole whole thing. They turned him into a punk. Eh, Dollar Comic Sandman, I've got that book. Don't need it. Suicide Squad, final issue... Fine with me. <laughs> uh, Teen Titans, final issue. Fine with me. <laughs> and Teen Titans is a friggin' mess because every time DC reboots, uh, they've got to keep every trademark, every property going. So you end up with these books that are just a clusterfuck of, of characters like Tim Drake. You know, why did you keep Tim Drake? in the new 52 well because he's an established brand we've got to keep him going even though it doesn't make any sense for if the new 52 started you know we're picking up five years into it he's already gone through three or four robins at that point <laughs> you know nothing makes any sense and and basically when you do that when you have to keep every character you've ever had and of course the whole changing wally into a black character too is stupid in the comic books it made sense in the tv show and i love those characters i love that version of joe far more than the comic book version of joe and that version of iris far more than the comic book version of iris i wouldn't mind if they decided to make joe and iris west black in the comic books as well but having wally be black when his father is white you know iris's brother um it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> you know, he would be kind of mulatto. He'd be, well, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I know mulatto is a trigger word too. Um, but I don't know. It, it was something that was done just to score media hit points. But anyway, you end up, what you do is you end up, when you do this kind of thing, you know, keeping all the characters, changing some of the characters needlessly, uh, you end up having to do all of these retcon stories. Like, every story is not a story. It is instead trying to set the universe and explain to you, okay, here's the status quo, here's what this character is. You know, it's why Hawkman, until Robert Venetti came along, you know, and everybody had been saying, well, no, Hawkman's backstory is this, no, it's this, no, it's that again. And he just came along and said, you know what? Everything happened. <laughs> And that was the solution. That was the fix that finally put Hawkman back on the right path. Um, but, you know, Teen Titans has been just a disaster because, again, it's mostly, you know, okay, well, who is Tim Drake this week? You know, what are we going to decide he, he actually is? Uh, Young Justice, well, that's Brian Michael Bendis, and so that was enough for me to be like, yeah, no. Just because by the time this book came along, I was already checked out on Superman. So I was like, yeah, I don't need anything else by Bendis right now. And, oh my God, Wells, that's it. <laughs> I've been yakking forever. And uh, and that is basically it right there. Because now we're into the trade paperbacks and graphic novels. And these are all reprint collections. And, uh, you know, not much. I'm not going to extend this video any longer by getting into all of that. Maybe another time, another video, that will be the appropriate place. <laughs> because you don't need this video to be any longer than it is already. <laughs> God, I feel like I should apologize to you. <laughs> because all I've done is, is rant and complain. Um, 
So let's go over to my pull list and we'll see that again what I'm getting for DC Comics is Batman 102 and 103, Batman Adventures Continues 6, Hawkman 29, Legion of Superheroes 11, and Looney Tunes 257. Six books I am getting from DC Comics and that is it. That's all that's on my list for November. But that's the state of DC Comics these days. And, you know, I, I know my ranting has been a little incoherent here and there, but that's, <laughs> that is what DC Comics has made of me. Uh, so, anyway, until the next video, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.